Thanks, Kenny. The Cats traveled down to Gainesville to take on the Gators without star point guard Ashton Hagens, who didn't travel with the team. Hagens decided not to travel, citing personal reasons. The Cats secured the number one overall seed in the SEC tournament and will face the winner of Tennessee versus Alabama. There has been no word yet on Hagen's return to the team, but Cal expects him back for postseason play. Is Ashton going to be back for the SEC tournament? I would fully expect him to be, but I haven't talked to him, so I'll, I'll probably talk to him Monday sometime. Not to use a cliche, but do you believe in miracles? For one UK alum, his miracle came true two weeks ago in the form of $10,000. Nick Hostetter hit an improbable half-court shot at the halftime of the Auburn-UK game to win $10,000 and the, all the glory that comes with it afterwards. We decided to catch up with Nick to see what was going on through his mind before and after he hit the shot and what he plans on doing with his winnings. That is Nick Hostetter. A fan whose amazing half-court shot at the halftime of the Kentucky men's basketball game versus Auburn two Saturdays ago that pocketed him $10,000. As well as him the half-court shot, he also apparently likes to play rock band. For Nick, a graduate of UK, he was in his own words dumbfounded in reaction to seeing him make the shot of his life. I'll be honest, I was terrified. I mean, just with the number of fans that were there, especially whenever I walked out onto the court and just looked around and saw everybody, it was, it was pretty overwhelming. Well, everyone is probably asking Nick at this moment in time, what will he be doing with all that money? Over, originally I went into it with me and my, my friends were gonna head to the casino and try to win some more. Um, you know, after I've thought about more, I really don't know what I'm gonna do yet, obviously until I get the money. I'm definitely gonna put some of it towards, you know, a good cause here in Lexington. Nick will be heading down to the SEC tournament in Nashville this week and plans on using some of his wins. The money, I am going to the SEC tournament. Uh... Nick said he plans on bringing a lot of his friends and family down with him to Nashville. The UK women's softball team had a primetime matchup last night versus Texas A&M in the second game of a three-game series. The Cats played uncharacteristically, accounting for six runners left on base in scoring position, an error, and one extra base hit. A pitching change in the third to Miranda Stoddard led to back-to-back -back home runs for Texas A&M. The Cats fell to A&M 6-3. The last game in the series will be played tonight at 7 p.m. And that's a look at today's local sports coverage. I'm Jasper Jones. Kenny and Noah, back to you. The impact of the widely spread coronavirus is not just causing paranoia in the streets, but also on Wall Street. The market took its biggest decline since 2008 last week. The Dow Jones dropped by at least 10%, and the S&P 500 took a weekly loss of about 12%. The speed at which these indexes fell is what surprised a lot of Wall Street experts and investors. UK finance professor John Chait gives some advice on what you should do as an investor regarding the effect the coronavirus has had on the market. Just sit back, wait for this to run its course, don't try to time the market. Because if there's a, if there's a miraculous um, vaccine that's uh, found in the next week, even though the vaccine might not be available for three months or four months, uh, the market will uh, jump higher. UK President Eli Capilouto emailed students concerning the coronavirus. Capilouto stated in an email that the university will not sponsor any travel to Italy, Iran, China, or South Korea. Those countries are considered high risk for contracting the virus. The university is currently working to bring study abroad students who are in Italy back to the States. With spring break less than two weeks away, Capilouto advises students to take precaution if traveling internationally, and they will seek advice from the, the CDC. Thanks guys! The UK baseball team kicks off their season this week on the road versus TCU. One bright spot for this year's team is the, third base, uh, the first baseman, TJ Collette, who was named to the preseason first team All-SEC. After a tough season last year, Head coach Nick Mingione is looking forward to a challenging SEC schedule and a conference that includes nine teams ranked in the USA Today preseason poll. I'll talk about our schedule. Um, extremely challenging again. We open up at TCU next Friday. They've been to Omaha a bunch of times, and I think it's going to feel a lot like at 17 when we opened up at North Carolina. I just wanted our team to be battle-tested right away. And uh, speaking of battle-tested, we'll be battle-tested again. 
15 of our first 18 SEC games are against teams ranked in the top 12. 15 of our first 18 SEC games. And then we get the, the challenge of opening it up at Vandy, the national champion. So looking forward to that challenge come SEC play. It's been more than three weeks since the death of NBA icon Kobe Bryant. To many kids, he is their generation's Michael Jordan. That certainly applies for some of the players at Henry Clay High School boys varsity basketball team as they talked about what Kobe meant to them. The confidence, the swagger, the killer mentality, the will to win by any means necessary. These are some of the legendary traits that made up one of the greatest players we have ever seen, Kobe Bean Bryant. The impact and legacy he left on this earth is as profound as his game was. He impacted the lives of many young aspiring players who want to follow in his footsteps, as well as people who were just fans of him. Opposing fans of the Lakers envied him, and kids grew up trying to emulate him. At Henry Clay High School, Sabian Diller and Marquise Warwick were some of Kobe's biggest fans growing up. Marquise would watch highlights of Kobe, trying to take what he saw and try to implement it into his own game. He was actually my favorite player of all time. Uh, you know, I really, like, that was the guy I watched the most highlights from, modeled my game, if I, if I modeled my game after anybody, but uh, I really liked him. Sabian said he was simply playing a video game at his friend's house when he heard the news. It was honestly shocking. I was just playing the video game like a typical teenage kid. I was sitting there, and one of my friends actually told me during the party that he died. It really shocked me. I just put the controller down and just sat there and didn't know what to do. I was just very shocked. Marquise, who is currently committed to play basketball at Northern Kentucky, likes to think that he has the same mamba light mentality when he's out on the court. I try to just, I try to definitely have a killer mentality like he did. Um, I know he never really had any excuses. I know when there's tough times, you know, he's got to push through. And he let me, he let me to think about that. I'm Jasper Jones, UK Student News Network. A public memorial service for Kobe has been set for February 24th at the Staples Center. You thought football was over after the Super Bowl? Think again. The XFL is back. There is a new unique kickoff format. Kickoffs involve no running start by the kicking team. The coverage team lines up at the 35-yard line, and the returning team lines up at the 30-yard line. Contact is only made after the returner catches the ball. Former UK football player Austin McGinnis was the starting kicker for the Dallas Renegades. He got a lot of praise from the Big Blue Nation on Twitter last night. McGinnis scored each point for the Renegades in a 15-9 losing effort. McGinnis is up for this week's XFL Star of the Week. And that's your look at sports for today. Jillian and Anna, back to you. Thanks, guys. After such a tough, tough loss at the hands of Auburn for the Cats this past Sunday, I'm here at the Student Center to ask, do people still care to watch the Final Four this Saturday now that the Cats are out? Probably not going to watch the Final Four just because, um, you know, UK is not in it. Not that many teams that I really care about are in it. But I'll probably watch, like, the NCAA like, championship game. Um, yeah, I am because I just... I mean, I just like college basketball. I don't care that much about Kentucky, although I do. So I just want to watch it, yeah. Some may not be tuning in, but one student's bracket stands in the way of a quick payday. I gambled a lot of money on it. Really? <laughs> yeah. how, how, how much money do you think? About 40 bucks, but 40 bucks. a lot for a college student. So there you have it. We got some mixed opinions from the students here. The Final Four starts this Saturday at 6 o'clock. I'm Jasper Jones, UK Student Sports Show. Guys, back to you.